Hey everybody, Mr. Piercy here, and what we're going to be looking at in this video are some example problems of how we're going to be using the rules for 36 to 90 triangles to find missing sides of uh, those types of triangles. Now, here are some examples that we're going to be looking at. These aren't the only ones. I got a couple more uh, that we're going to be looking at, but we have these. Uh, here, I have three 36 to 90 triangles, and as you can tell, only one length has been given to you. And this is where some students initially, they may look at it and say, well, there's not enough information for me to be able to find the two sides that we're looking for. So for instance, the one on the left, the hypotenuse is X and the long leg is Y. Well, some of us may say, well, they've only given me one side of the triangle, so I can't use the Pythagorean theorem to find anything else. Well, that's kind of the point uh, because this is a special type of right triangle uh, that has very particular rules associated with it uh, that allows us to find missing sides of a right triangle without having to use the Pythagorean theorem. That means I only, I don't need two sides. I can, I can do everything I need to with one. So I want to work through these as an example just to kind of make sure that you know what I expect you to be able to do when it comes to uh, solving 36 to 90 right triangles. Now in this case, it doesn't matter whether I want to find the long leg first or the hypotenuse first. But I'm going to go ahead and find the hypotenuse first. Now, again, as with other things that we've seen in class, uh, this is a particular rule that we're going to be using. And any time that you're going to use these rules uh, for the time being, I don't care how many times you have to write them. If you have to write them 100 times, you have to write them 100 times. But you always start by uh, writing the rule. So in here, I'm going to say the hypotenuse is equal to the short leg times 2. Well, in this case, the hypotenuse is x. The short leg is 5, so that means x, the hypotenuse in this case, is 10 units long. Now, moving on to the second rule uh, for our 3690 triangles, we say that the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. So in this case, the long leg is y, the short leg again is 5, and we multiply it by the square root of 3. Now, because we're going to be leaving most of our answers in radical form, uh, we can stop here. So there's our two answers that we would need for this particular example to solve for x and y. But again, it doesn't matter how many times you use it. Every time you use a rule in, in math in general, you should always write that rule down. It's just a fundamental skill. Now, here in the second example, the one in the middle, we're looking for the short leg and we're looking for the long leg, and we've been given the hypotenuse. Now, in this case, uh, you need to pay attention to the rules themselves. The short leg, if you pay attention to the two equations that we have, we have, uh, let me just go ahead and write them down here. The hypotenuse is equal to the short leg times 2, and that the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. Well, the short leg, if, if we were in an algebra uh, classroom, this is just an equation. The short leg is the independent variable. So I have to have that in order to find either the hypotenuse or the long leg. Uh, now, in this case, because they've given me the hypotenuse, I am not able to start by finding the long leg. In the last example, if I wanted to find the long leg first, I could because I knew what the short leg was already. In this case, I have to work out the I have to use the hypotenuse to figure out what the short leg is before I can actually find the long leg. So let's go ahead and do that. The hypotenuse in this case is 12. The short leg is n. So we're saying n times 2. So to get the n by itself, we'll divide both sides by 2. On the right side of the equation, 2 over 2 simplifies to be 1. And on the left side of the equation, 12 over 2 simplifies to be 6. So in this case, the short leg is 6 units long. So I need that in order to figure out the next part of the triangle. So here, the long leg is m, and the short leg is 6. And I multiply it by the square root of 3. And since I'm leaving it in radical form, we just stop there. We don't actually multiply by the square root of 3. So last example on this page. Uh, again, I'm going to just go ahead and write my rules down. Hypotenuse is equal to the short leg times 2. And the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. And again, in this case, because they're not giving me 
the short leg, I have to find that first before I can find the hypotenuse. So in this case, I'm going to start with the long leg formula, substituting 11 radical 3 in for the long leg. The short leg is y times the square root of 3. So at this point, I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. Now, in this case, we don't have to worry about rationalizing anything because on the right side, radical 3 over radical 3 simplifies to be 1, leaving me with just 1y. And on the left side of the equal sign, the radical parts also simplify. So 11 radical 3 divided by radical 3 is just 11. And now that I know what the long leg is, I can come here to find the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is x, and I'll say 11 times 2. So the hypotenuse in this case is 22 units long. Now these three examples are fairly standard. They're fairly basic problems, nothing really fancy going on. Okay. This next example here, these two I chose specifically because uh, they're not going to be quite as straightforward. So let's take a look at the example that we have on the left. Again, I'm going to start with my rules. Hypotenuse is equal to the short leg times 2, and that the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. Now, in this case, we know what the short leg is. So we could find the hypotenuse or the long leg first. doesn't really make any difference. So I'm going to go ahead and find the hypotenuse first. Uh, and I'm going to say x is equal to the short leg, 13 radical 3 times 2. When you're multiplying radical numbers and whole numbers together, you kind of treat it the same way you would uh, if it was a variable. So for instance, if I said 13x times 2, we would just multiply the coefficients together. We would multiply the 13 and the 2, and that would give me 26x. Well, when you're multiplying with radicals, you kind of do the same thing. You only multiply the whole number parts together. You don't multiply the radical parts together. So in this case, my hypotenuse will be, uh, oops, not 13. But it will be 26 radical 2, radical 3. So a lot of students in this case might want to say 26 radical 6, and that would be bad. Don't do that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and find the long leg. So here the long leg is y, and I'm going to multiply it by the short leg, which is 13 radical 3 times radical 3, because that's what the rule says. Now here, again, we'll multiply the radical parts together. Uh, whole numbers get multiplied together. Radicals get multiplied or divided together. So the whole numbers are just a 13 and a 1. So 13 times 1 is just 13. Radical 3 times radical 3 is going to give me the radical 9. And, of course, the square root of 9 is 3. So in this case, the long leg is 39 units long. Now, the last one that we want to look at here, this is one where we're going to have to pay attention to the denominator of the fraction in order to make sure that we rationalize things properly. Again, start with my rules. Hypotenuse is equal to the short leg times 2, and that the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. Now, in this case, again, they're not giving me the short leg. They're giving me the long leg. So uh, I have to know what the short leg is before I can figure out what the hypotenuse is. So I'm going to start with the second rule where I say the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. Substituting gives me 9 to be equal to y radical 3. Now at this point, we divide by the square root of 3 so we can get the y by itself. On the right side, radical 3 over radical 3 simplifies to be 1, leaving me with just 1y. Now, on the left side of the equal sign, we're going to get 9 over square root of 3, not 3 or radical 3. 
a lot of times students will have a tendency to just simplify like normal and they say oh we have a nine on top and a three on the bottom and they say oh well we can simplify that well one is a whole number one is a rational or one is a radical number or an irrational number if i take the decimal value of it so we can't simplify those like a normal fraction we have to rationalize it when I rationalize the fraction, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by whatever the radical part is. So in the top, 9 times radical 3 is 9 radical 3. In the bottom, radical 3 times radical 3 is really just going to be 3. Now, I have a whole number 9 in the numerator, and I have a whole number 3 in the denominator, and those can actually simplify so 9 over 3 simplifies to be 3 radical 3 units long for the short leg. Now, let me go ahead and let me move this thing over here a little bit so we have a little bit more room. Now we can find the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, x, is equal to the short leg, which is 3 radical 3 times 2 and again only multiply the whole number parts together so the 3 on the left of the radical and the 2 multiply together to give me 6 radical 3 units long for the hypotenuse so those are the examples uh, that I wanted to make sure that you paid attention to and again this one specifically You have to rationalize uh, but this is uh, essentially about as complicated as they get uh, we could always you know change things up and make you know lengths that are you know different radical numbers like say radical 5 or radical 2 or uh, radical 7 something like that but you use the same rules uh, all the time uh, just pay attention to Multiply whole numbers together and radical numbers together. Do not mix uh, the two up. Don't don't blend them. But uh, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen, or that's it for this video, I should say. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the examples that you saw here, by all means, let me know what they are, and I'll be happy to help you. Uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and be good. Take care.